Hey everyone, I'm Magic Not Included, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I created Hornet from Hollow Knight in Blender and walking you through the process step-by-step step so you can make her too. I'm gonna to try to make this as easy as possible to follow. Just a heads up, I'm not an expert by any means, and there's a strong chance you'll probably know how to do something better than me, which if you do, let me know in the comments. This video will assume you have at least a basic understanding of Blender and its interface. I also have a link to my project file if you wanna take a closer look. Link is in the description. And as far as references go, I use this image of Hornet as I thought she had a cool dynamic action pose and it seemed like it'd be a fun choice for her. Feel free to use any other references or poses that you want. You could probably get similar results with the techniques I cover in this video. This video will be part one where we make Hornet and part two will be the environment to put her in. So to start, I'm in front orthographic view and you can get there by pressing one on the number pad. Hit shift A to add a new object and we're gonna go under curve and select path. Now we're gonna grab the outer points and shift them up along the Z axis, also scale them in a little bit. Now you can grab the lower outer points and scale those down a little bit to bring them a little closer as well. Also, quick side note, sorry this image is kind of in the way. I'll try to show any relevant information. I was recording myself making this, but I was eating crackers the whole time while making this, so I figured I'd spare you the footage. Now we need to add some thickness to this path. So over here in the Object Data Properties tab, we can increase the depth under the bevel section, tab into Edit Mode, and select the two points that will be the horn tips and scale them down with Alt plus S, after scaling them down, the overall shape wasn't quite what I wanted, so grab the two lower outer points and bring them in just a little bit and tweak the shape so it matches Hornet a little bit better. Now Hornet's face is a little bit longer than the lower part of the curve, so we do need to go ahead and fix that. So we're gonna convert the curve into a mesh. So right click on it and go to convert to and select mesh. Now select your shape and we're gonna go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier. I went ahead and cranked it up to just level two. I think that is probably good enough for what we're gonna be doing. And I went into sculpt mode. From here, I got the elastic grab brush. And then I started pulling up the middle section between the horns, making sure that symmetry is on and pulling down the lower part of her face just to get the shape the way we want bringing in the bottom side of the horns a little bit. Just making sure that everything's looking okay. I took the inflate brush just by hitting I, that's the default hotkey for it, just to pull the face out just a little bit, give it a little bit more volume. I also realized that uh, I needed to apply the subdivision surface modifier because it wasn't actually doing anything. <laughs> so make sure you do that a little bit sooner than I did for better results. So just go through and kind of tweak the shape a little bit just with the inflate brush, um, whether you're inflating or deflating it just a little bit to get the overall shape that we're looking for. Just play with it a little bit, you'll get there. So then I went ahead and rotated it back along the X axis because Hornet's head's not completely straight up and down. You'll notice a lot that we kind of go back and forth between things just to make sure things look right. And that's totally okay. That's just part of the process. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and add her eyes. So what I did is I just added a Boolean modifier to her head. And then we just went ahead and added a sphere. And we're going to stretch along the x-axis, rotate it a little bit, and just kind of get it into position where her eyes should be. These are going to be cutting out nice little grooves for her eyes. Add a mirror modifier to that sphere you just created and then choose the mirror object as her head. Go back and select her head mesh, and then under the Boolean modifier, select the sphere that you made for her eyes as the object. When you're comfortable with the eye positioning, go ahead and apply the mirror modifier. And once that's applied, you can parent the eye object to her head. So when we break symmetry and move her head, the eyes will stay in place. So at this point, I want to match the reference a little bit better. So we're going to break some symmetry a little bit. Um, her, in the reference image, her head's turned a little bit to the side. So we're going to go ahead and try to do that and get ready to start making her body. So her body is about as long as her head is. Um, so I went ahead and duplicated her head just as a point of reference to get a good idea of where it needs to sit. To make her body, I went ahead and added a single vertex, moved it over to the side a little bit, extruded it up by pressing E, and then make sure to add a mirror modifier, select the head as the mirror object and make sure clipping is enabled. And once you have that done, go ahead and add a skin modifier. Now it's gonna look really strange at first, but we're gonna go ahead and fix that real quick. Tab into edit mode and make sure all vertices are selected and then hit control plus A to start scaling everything down. 
Now I'm just going through with x-ray mode enabled so I can get see what's going on a little bit better and I'm just selecting individual vertices and using control A to scale them and repositioning them slightly to start getting your body into shape. I went ahead and added a subdivision surface modifier just to make things look a little bit more smooth and I applied the mirror modifier so we can break symmetry here. So the cool thing about using the skin modifier is that when you're moving the vertices, it adapts to the positioning of everything really nicely. So it makes editing things just a lot easier for, for positioning just a really basic body like this. Now make sure you're looking at your reference. That's something I probably should have been doing more at this point. Um, you're gonna see me fix the positioning quite a bit later, but right now we're just getting kind of a, a basic idea of where her legs need to be positioned and her overall body needs to be positioned. She's angled forward quite a bit, so we're gonna go ahead and move things into place. I just went ahead and added a basic material for her body. Now make sure you label your materials or you're gonna have a headache later trying to figure out what's what. And I just turned the material black. I also scrolled down to the viewport display options and just made it the same color just so I could have a better understanding what things were gonna look like from the solid view. Now to color in her eyes, I went ahead and made a duplicate of her head and the eye object that we cut out because I needed to apply the Boolean modifier, but I wanted to have a backup just in case I messed things up or I wanted to change things later without having to remake her entire head, which is great because I actually ended up using that and made a couple minor tweaks because I wasn't super happy with how her head initially turned out. So now I went ahead and selected all the vertices that make up her eyes, and then I assigned those vertices to the same material that we used for her body. And then I pressed control I to invert the selection and then assign the remaining vertices to a white material that's gonna be now for her head. Now there's probably definitely a better way to do this, but this is just kind of what worked for me. The Boolean modifier didn't make the cleanest cuts, so I had to do a little bit of touch up. And to do that, I just like the vertices that were being a little wonky and reassigned those. So now I actually switched to the backup head that I made because I lowered the eyes a little bit and I liked the way it looked a little bit better, it looked a little bit more like Hornet. So now pretty much with whatever head you decide to use, go ahead and move it into position over her neck that we shifted forward earlier. And I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze it together a little bit more because it looks like her head's just a little wide, but yours may have turned out a little bit different and that's okay. And now it's time for the cloak. For her cloak, I just added a circle mesh with eight vertices, and then I went ahead and scaled it down and positioned it up around her neck at an angle. Go ahead and grab those vertices, hit E to extrude, and then scale up just a little bit. Adjust the positioning or rotation as needed. Go ahead and select the lower ring of vertices, and then we're gonna extrude those out just like we did for the collar. But for the rest of the bodies, we're just gonna pull it out and then scale it up quite a bit. Now we need to make her cloak look a little bit more cloak-like. So add a subdivision surface modifier, turn the levels up to two, and right-click shade smooth. And then we're also going to add a solidify modifier to give it a little bit of thickness. I went ahead and readjusted the cloak and put it in a little bit of a different position to get it ready for sculpting. Now for sculpting the cloak. Start by adding a multi-res modifier to her cloak. I subdivided up to level four, which felt good for me for sculpting folds in the fabric. I started with the inflate brush and inflated parts of her cloak to stick out more, as well as holding down control on the inflate brush to deflate the in-between sections to make her cloak start getting this wavy shape. I mixed in a bit of the crease polish brush to get deeper grooves, the clay strips brush to add or remove some clay where I felt it was necessary, and the grab brush to push or pull things into shape. I'd suggest just playing around with what works for you, and don't be afraid to exaggerate the flow more than you'd think. I'll speed the section up so you can see the process, but there's a lot of back and forth between the different brushes I mentioned. I would definitely recommend taking your time on this section, so pause if you need to catch up.
And once you get a shape you're happy with, we can finally move on to her weapon, the needle. By the way, my multi-res modifier is set to level zero for the viewport, but don't worry, all the sculpting work I did is still there, it's just not visible in object mode. Making the needle's pretty easy. Start by adding a torus, rotate on the x-axis by 90 degrees, scale it down. I then went ahead and added a cylinder, scaled it down to make the handle, and then scaled it up on the z-axis to elongate it, made some minor adjustments, and move it into place. Now for the actual pointy part, I used a curve. I'm sure you could use a cylinder or something else, but I figured a curve would be really nice and easy for me, so that's what I did. I scaled it down, moved into orthographic view, put it where I, it should be. Then I went to the object data properties and I added a little bit of depth. Centered that over the handle, tab into edit mode, and I deleted the top two vertices. Then I grabbed the upper one, dragged it up on the Z axis, scaled it down to zero, and scaled up the bottom one to give it that more triangular shape, that more cone-like shape. Make any minor adjustments as necessary. Still in edit mode, grab the base of the needle, press E to extrude, pull down a vertice on the Z axis, and I scaled that in to fit the handle to give it that tapered edge. Now I went ahead and parented everything to the eye of the needle just because it wouldn't let me parent it to the curve, but I just did that so I can move everything easily and get it into place. I think the model is starting to look pretty good, but take some time to make any adjustments needed. I mentioned earlier how you shouldn't be afraid to make her cloak more dynamic, so I spent some time doing that here and just making some minor adjustments to her positioning. And because I used the backup model for her head that I made earlier, I need to make her eyes black, so I use the same method from earlier just to assign the vertices black and clean up the edges like before. For her thread, I'll cover that a bit more in depth in the environment video, as that was something I didn't make till almost the end of the project. It's fairly straightforward, as all you need to do is add a bezier curve and keep extruding out points and adjusting the handles to get your desired shape. You just go down to curve, add a bezier curve, and we'll move that over here, tab into edit mode. And essentially all I did was I just grabbed these points and you can move into like top view if you need to. And uh, you can just kind of rotate them out, hit E to extrude. And then you just kind of play with, with, uh, with these points and the positioning. It has to scale them down or up depending on how big you want these handles to be. Um, rotate them with R. So you have a lot of options. Um, I did add some thickness to it by going over here to the object data properties again, and then adding a little bit of depth, obviously not that much. Um, if you want, you can also fill the caps, but we'll go in a little bit more in depth with that in the next video. And if you've made it this far, congratulations. You now have a pretty cool Hornet model. If you have any questions about this video, leave me a comment and I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. And if you want to know how I made this stylized Hollow Knight environment to put Hornet in, then make sure you hit like and subscribe and turn the notification bell on so you can know when the next video is ready. Also, this is my first Blender tutorial, so please let me know if there's anything I could have done to make this easier to understand or easier to follow along with. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.